بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد. This is a concise demonstration on how to pray according to the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. As the Prophet he said, صلوا كما رأيتموني أصلي. Pray as you have seen me pray. And this is for new Muslims. And if somebody wants more information and further details, detailed proofs and evidences. Then they can return to the book Sifatul Salat, the description of the prayer of a Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen or a Sheikh Al Albani that will be shown at the end of this video. It is necessary for the one that is praying to make the niyyah, the intention to pray in his heart before he begins the prayer. So if he is praying Salatul Dhuhr, he makes the intention to pray Salatul Dhuhr. Or if he's praying Salat al-Asr, he makes the intention to pray Salat al-Asr. Or if he's praying Salat al-Maghrib, then he makes the intention to pray Salat al-Maghrib. And the same is applicable to the other prayers. The intention for the prayer is not to be uttered upon the tongue. Because the Prophet wasallam and his companions never did this. Saying the intention upon the tongue, whether it is an obligatory prayer or supererogatory prayer, is an error and an innovation, and all innovations are misguidance. The Muslim praying begins the prayer by saying the takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. They should raise their hands while saying the opening takbir, takbirat al-ihram, or just before it, or just after it, as all of these have been found in the sunnah. He should spread out his fingers slightly and raise his palms to the level of his shoulders or to the level of his earlobes, but without touching the ears. He should begin by reciting the opening supplication, Dua al istiftah which is recited silently. For education, he will recite it out loud currently. I declare you free of all imperfections, O Allah, and all praises for you. Blessed is your name. Great and exalted is your kingdom, and there is none worthy of worship besides you. He should then recite silently in all prayers, but he will say it out loud for the purpose of education and teaching, al istiada seeking refuge with Allah from the shaitan, the devil. I seek refuge with Allah from the shaitan, the devil, the rejected and outcast. Then he recites silently in every unit of prayer, which is known as a rak'ah, the basmala. But we will say it out loud for the purpose of education. But in the prayer, in each rak'ah, the basmala, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, is to be said silently. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the possessor of vast mercy, the one who bestows mercy. Then he recites the opening chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha. In Salat Al-Fajr, he recites it out loud. In Salat Al-Dhuhr and Salat Al-Asr, he recites it silently. In Salat Al-Maghrib, he recites it out loud in the first two rak'ah. In Salat Al-Isha, he recites it out loud in the first two rak'ah, the first two units of prayer. For education, he will recite it out loud Currently. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Deen Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem Sirat Al-Ladheena An'amta Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. The meaning of this is all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all of the creation, the possessor of vast mercy, the one who bestows mercy upon whomever he wills, the sole owner of the day of recompense. You alone we worship. 
and it is you alone we call upon for aid. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those on whom you have bestowed your blessings, not the path of those who have earned your anger, nor those who went astray. For the one who cannot recite the opening chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha, because they are new to Islam and they have not memorized it yet, then they can recite the following words, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wa la ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, which means glorified is Allah, free and far removed from all imperfections, all praise is for Allah, and none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah, and Allah is the greatest, and there is no movement, no power except by the will of Allah. And if the person has not memorized this, then they can repeat as much as they know of it throughout the prayer. After reciting the opening chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha, the person should recite whatever he knows of another surah of the Quran. He starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the Basmala, as he did with Surah Al-Fatiha, which is recited silently. But for educational purposes, the brother will recite the Basmala out loud. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر The second surah which is only recited in the first two rak'ah, the first two units of prayer, is recited aloud in Salat al-Fajr and silent in Duhr and Asr, and aloud in Salat al-Maghrib and Salat al-Isha. Once he has finished reciting, he remains silent for a brief moment. Then he raises his hands as he did when he began the prayer, and he says the takbir by saying, Allahu Akbar. Then he performs the ruku' bowing, by placing the palms of his hands on his knees, spreading his fingers, holding the knees firmly. He must stretch out his back, keeping it straight and level, such that if some water was poured upon it, it would settle there. The head should not be dipped, nor raised high, but instead level with his back. He should keep his elbows away from touching his sides. Allahu Akbar. Whilst in Rukur bowing, he says, Subhan Rabbi al Azim, glorified is my Lord, free and far removed from all imperfections, the Supreme. He says this silently, and he should repeat this three times or more, but for educational purposes, he will say it out loud. Subhan Rabbi al Azim, Subhan Rabbi al Azim, Subhan Rabbi al Azim. Then he raises up from Rukur bowing and straightens his back, making himself upright. And as he comes up from the ruku' bowing, he recites, Sami Allahu liman hamida. Allah listens and responds to the one who praises him. Once he is upright, he raises his hands, as he did when he first entered the prayer, to the level of his shoulders or earlobes. He stands still until all of his bones return to their places and puts his hands by his sides. And then he recites the following, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, our Lord, and all praise is for you. Then he says, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. He then prostrates on the ground, which is known as sujood, with his hands being placed on the ground first. And some scholars mention the knees being placed first. He brings his fingers together on the ground. He rests on his hands and puts them forward, pointing his fingers towards the direction of the Qibla. He keeps his elbows and forearms lifted above the ground and does not spread out on the ground in the manner of a dog. While in prostration, he firmly places his forehead, nose, hands, knees and toes on the ground, as you will see. He keeps his feet upright with the toes pointing towards the Qibla and his heels joined together. He must be settled in his prostration and be still in that state, with his forehead, nose, palms of the hands, both knees and the toes of both feet in contact with the ground. 
الله أكبر One in sujood, one in prostration, he says, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, glorified is my Lord, free and far removed from all imperfections, the Most High. He says this three times or more, and it is said silently, but for educational purposes, he will say it out loud. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Then he raises his head while saying, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. And he sits allowing every bone to settle. His sitting is such that he lays his left foot flat underneath him and sits on it. And he keeps his right foot upright with his toes pointing in the direction of the Qibla, as will be illustrated. Allahu Akbar. Whilst sitting between the two prostrations, he says, Rabbi ghfirli, Rabbi ghfirli, O Lord, forgive me, O Lord, forgive me. He says this silently, however, for educational purposes, he will say it out loud. Rabbi ghfirli, Rabbi ghfirli. He then says, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest, and returns to make the second sajda prostration, just as he made the first. Allahu Akbar Repeating the same words silently However, for educational purposes He will say it out loud Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la Then he raises his head saying the takbir Allahu Akbar And sits as he sat before very briefly And this is known as Jalsat Al-Istiraha A brief sitting for rest before standing for the second rak'ah. To stand for the second rak'ah, he supports himself on his two hands and he returns to the standing position as he was in the first rak'ah. Allahu Akbar. In the second rak'ah, unit of prayer, he recites what he recited in the first rak'ah, but without the opening supplication. So he begins with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim silently, but for educational purposes here, he will say it out loud, followed by Surah Al-Fatiha, and then he recites whatever is easy for him from the Quran. The second rak'ah should be made shorter than the first. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا Amen. قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد. Remember that Salat al Fajr is recited out loud, Salat al Dhuhr and Salat al Asr. A silent prayers, Salat al-Maghrib and Salat al-Isha, the first two rak'ah units of prayer are to be recited aloud. Once he has finished reciting, he remains silent for a brief moment. Then he raises his hands as he did when he began the prayer. And he says the takbir by saying, Allahu Akbar. Then he performs the ruku' bowing, by placing the palms of his hands on his knees, spreading his fingers, holding the knees firmly. He must stretch out his back, keeping it straight and level, such that if some water was poured upon it, it would settle there. The head should not be dipped, nor raised high, but instead level with his back. He should keep his elbows away from touching his sides. Allahu Akbar.
Whilst in Ruku'ah bowing, he says, Subhana Rabbi al Azim, glorified is my Lord, free and far removed from all imperfections, the Supreme. He says this silently, and he should repeat this three times or more, but for educational purposes, he will say it out loud. Subhana Rabbi al Azim, Subhana Rabbi al Azim, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. Then he raises up from Ruku'ah bowing and straightens his back, making himself upright. And as he comes up from the ruku' bowing, he recites, Sami Allahu liman hamida. Allah listens and responds to the one who praises him. Once he is upright, he raises his hands, as he did when he first entered the prayer, to the level of his shoulders or earlobes. He stands still until all of his bones return to their places and puts his hands by his sides. And then he recites the following, Rabbana walak alhamd, our Lord, and all praise is for you. Sami'a Allah liman hamida. Rabbana walak alhamd. Then he says, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. He then prostrates on the ground, which is known as sujood, with his hands being placed on the ground first. And some scholars mention the knees being placed first. He brings his fingers together on the ground. He rests on his hands and puts them forward, pointing his fingers towards the direction of the Qibla. He keeps his elbows and forearms lifted above the ground and does not spread out on the ground in the manner of a dog. While in prostration, he firmly places his forehead, nose, hands, knees and toes on the ground, as you will see. He keeps his feet upright with the toes pointing towards the Qibla and his heels joined together. He must be settled in his prostration and be still in that state with his forehead, nose, palms of the hands, both knees and the toes of both feet in contact with the ground. Allahu Akbar. While in sujood, while in prostration, he says, Subhana Rabbi al A'la, glorified is my Lord, free and far removed from all imperfections, the Most High. He says this three times or more, and it is said silently, but for educational purposes, he will say it out loud. Subhana Rabbi al A'la, Subhana Rabbi al A'la, Subhana Rabbi al A'la. Then he raises his head while saying, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest and he sits allowing every bone to settle. His sitting is such that he lays his left foot flat underneath him and sits on it and he keeps his right foot upright with his toes pointing in the direction of the Qibla as will be illustrated. Allahu Akbar Whilst sitting between the two prostrations, he says, Rabbirfirli, Rabbirfirli, O Lord, forgive me, O Lord, forgive me. He says this silently, however, for educational purposes, he will say it out loud. Rabbirfirli, Rabbirfirli. He then says, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest, and returns to make the second sajda prostration just as he made the first. Allahu Akbar. Repeating the same words silently, however, for educational purposes, he will say it out loud. Subhana Rabbi al A'la. Subhana Rabbi al A'la. Subhana Rabbi al A'la. In the second raka'ah, after the second prostration, he sits as he did before and clenches his right fist, resting it on his right thigh and knee. His thumb over the middle finger, his index finger raised pointing straight towards the Qibla, whilst keeping his vision fixed on it throughout the whole of this sitting. While sitting in this position for a tashahud, he should say, At-tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu, As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah 
وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Words of praise, exaltation and glorification are for Allah alone. And praise, worship and pure words and attributes also. May Allah send peace and security upon the Prophet and his mercy and blessings. May Allah send peace and security upon all of us and upon his righteous servants. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. التحيات لله والصلوات والطيبات السلام على النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله After that, he should supplicate with the following words This is said silently in the prayer However, for educational purposes he will say it out loud. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. O oh Allah, extol and honor Muhammad and the true followers of Muhammad. Just as you extolled and honored Ibrahim and the path offspring of Ibrahim. Indeed, you are due all praise, perfect in glory and magnificence. O oh Allah, send your blessings on Muhammad and upon the true followers of Muhammad, just as you send blessings upon Ibrahim and upon the pious offspring of Ibrahim. Indeed, you are deserving of all praise, perfect in glory and magnificence. Then the one praying says, Allahu Akbar. When he stands for the third rakah, he supports himself using his two hands, as he did previously. He returns to the standing position as he was in in the first rak'ah. Allahu Akbar. In the third rak'ah, the third unit of prayer, and the fourth rak'ah, the fourth unit of prayer, he recites Surah Al Fatiha beginning with Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, and this is recited silently. He then continues in the prayer like he did in the previous raka'at, units of prayer. This is the fourth rak'ah, and he continues the fourth rak'ah as he did the third.
In the final rak'ah, he sits for the last tashahud, which is known as at-tashahud al-akhir. And remember that this is in the second rak'ah for Salat al-Fajr, and for Salat al-Dhuhr and Asr, it is in the fourth rak'ah. Salat al-Maghrib, it is the third rak'ah, and Salat al-Isha, it is the fourth rak'ah. So while sitting, like he did previously, he says, At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat, as-salamu ala al-Nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, as-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi as-salihin, ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abiduhu wa rasooluh. Words of praise, exaltation, and glorification are for Allah alone. And praise, worship, and pure words and attributes also. May Allah send peace and security upon the Prophet and his mercy and blessings. May Allah send peace and security upon all of us and upon his righteous servants. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Oh Allah, extol and honor Muhammad and the true followers of Muhammad just as you extolled and honored Ibrahim and the path offspring of Ibrahim Indeed, you are due all praise, perfect in glory and magnificence. O oh Allah, send your blessings on Muhammad and upon the true followers of Muhammad, just as you send blessings upon Ibrahim and upon the pious offspring of Ibrahim. Indeed, you are deserving of all praise, perfect in glory and magnificence. Remember that the supplications in the tashahud are said silently. And this is applicable likewise to the final tashahud. After saying a tahiyyat, and sending salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the last tashahud, he adds at the end of that the following supplication, seeking refuge with Allah from four affairs. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min a'adhaab jahannam wa min a'adhaab al-qabr wa min fitnat al-mahya wal mamad wa min sharri fitnat al-masih al-dajjal. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from the punishment of the hellfire and from the punishment of the grave, and from the trials of life and death, and from the tribulation of the false messiah. Then the one who is praying may supplicate in the last tashahud to Allah for whatever he pleases from the authentic supplications that we find in the sunnah. However, if he does not know them or has not memorized them, he may still ask Allah Azza wa Jal, uttering any supplication that is permissible and easy for him, seeking from Allah benefit for himself in his religious and worldly affairs. While sitting for the final tashahud, there is also another way to sit, which is known as jalsa tawarruk. And this will be demonstrated as follows. When sitting in tashahud, this is the view from the back, which clarifies the correct manner to sit. And this is known as jalsa al-iftirash, where the one who is praying they sit such where they lay their left foot flat underneath them and they sit upon it. And they keep their right foot upright with their toes pointing to the direction of the Qibla. This is known as Jalsat al iftirash And this is the correct way to sit in the first tashahud. And it is also allowed to sit in the last tashahud like this. In the last tashahud, as explained, a person may also sit as established in the sunnah with a sitting that is known as Jasat al-Tawarruk. Jasat al-Tawarruk is when the person praying, their left hip or buttock is upon the ground, their left foot settles under their right shin, and their right foot is upright next to their right hip, and their toes are directed to the Qibla. They can sit like this if they are able, without harming or restricting those who may be praying next to them. Then he turns his head to the right side and says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May Allah's peace and security be upon you and his mercy. And then he turns his head to the left side and says, 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And with that, alhamdulillah, is a brief and concise description of the prayer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Next, we will demonstrate some common errors that people make in the prayer. The first is when they raise their hands, they have the palms instead of facing towards the direction of the Qibla, facing towards their ears, which is a clear error. Another error that people fall into is that they touch their earlobes when raising their hands. Another error when raising the hands is that some people just raise them with their palms facing towards the ground halfway towards their chest. Another common error that people make after the opening takbir is that they leave their hands at their side instead of placing them on their chest. And there is no proof in the sunnah to support this. Rather, this is a misunderstanding of some of the adherents of some of the schools of jurisprudence. Another common error when placing the hands upon the chest is that some people put their left hand all the way on their heart, which is not supported by any proof or evidence. Another common error in this position is people placing their hand on their elbow. Another common mistake when standing in Qiyam is that some people, they look to the sky. This is prohibited in the Sunnah. Another mistake that people make, they look all around instead of looking at the place of prostration. When praying, a person should pray towards a raised object, which is known as a sutra. This is established from the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Its height should be approximately two hand spans or taller, such as a wall, a chair, or the like. Another common error is that some people in ruku are either they bow too low or they bow too high. When in sujood as well, a person erects their feet as demonstrated with their toes pointing towards the direction of the Qibla, if possible, and the feet should be together. A common mistake when people are in sujood, prostrating, is that they have their feet widely apart. From the common mistakes of tashahud, is that the one who is praying sometimes points to the sky. Sometimes they point all the way to the ground. Another mistake is that they make a circular motion with their finger. That which is correct is that they either point straight with their finger or they move their finger slightly, as mentioned in Sifat Salat by Sheikh Al Albani, Rahimahullah. Another mistake is that some people, they position their hand way off their knee, nearer to the ground. 